Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to this week's edition of the Digital Shop Talk Radio. Who wants to be a digital shop millionaire? So you might remember when we had our Jeopardy episode with our three extremely brave contestants looking to gamify some of our best practice educational content. And so today's episode, we're going to give it another shot with who wants to be a digital shop millionaire. And we have a fabulous guest with us today, Bill Rimmer from Cooper Lake Automotive in Smyrna, Georgia. And he's going to be joined by Ashley Payne. She's busy. The shop is jumping like all digital shops should be. And uh, so she'll be joining us here in a little bit. And they are going to be our brave first contestants on who wants to be a digital shop millionaire. And as always, we've got Uwe Kleinschmidt joining us. He's going to be our expert panel of experts today. And Bill Rimmer, welcome, buddy. Thank you very much for attending and being brave enough to be the first contestant. Well, thank you. I didn't realize I was the first contestant, but uh, I'll take it. Um, you know, I appreciate y'all calling me up. I wasn't planning on doing this, but um, you know, I'm always up to talk about auto vials. I, I, you know, I enjoy the product, so. Well, and I'll tell you what, he didn't even have to do well. He, they, maybe they kicked it around for a second. Ashley said, you know, I think Bill would be better. Bill said, you know, why didn't you have Ashley? And I said, well, how about both of you? And, and I got to tell you, we just got the thing kind of hammered out. And so I called him yesterday. And so that's, you know, that's, uh, you know, really appreciate Bill and thank you for, you know, almost without hesitation, jumping in on short notice and coming on and uh, share a little bit about your shop with us. How did 2020 treat you? How are things going in Georgia? You guys got a big, uh, you're making national news today. I think you got an election going on down there. Yeah, we got this election. I'll be glad when the election's over. You can't imagine the number of stupid text messages telling you how to vote. It's ridiculous. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, the corona last year i mean i was happy because we never had to close a day wow didn't have to lay anyone off and everyone made the same or more money than 2019 wow. um, that was pretty important for me overall the shop was down eight percent we had uh three employees including me get coronavirus and uh you know I got it over Christmas, so it ruined my holidays. I've only been oh back to work for like three days. So, oh my goodness, um, you're just getting over. Yeah. Being old, man, it's a lot harder than these young people. They get it. They're like, nothing, no problem. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but so yeah, we were down overall 8%, which I feel like is pretty good considering mean, buddy. One, of the months, one of the months we were down 60% because they actually locked down the state which we were open, but if no one is driving or no one is going anywhere and everyone's scared crapless because of the news, they're not coming to get the car fixed. I mean, you know, I mean, especially when your car's sitting there for three months and not even being drove. So when they started opening back up, it was record city. And so that was able, we were able to like overcome a lot of the, the valley there, um, which I knew it was going to be. I, um, we had had six months reserves to make sure that we could pay everyone and pay everything. If no one even walked in the door for six months, that was, that's what I had budgeted myself. I normally have more than that, but I bought a new house in 2020. So that took away some of my capital. But uh, yeah, I normally try to stay at 20 at six full months of all expenses, all employee salary. Um, that's if we do no work. That's incredible. As long as, and we were doing that's a little incredible. bit of work. So even, even though we were losing, that still extends my six months, right? So, you know, you're supposed to do 10,000 a day and you do two, that still extends you a little bit over time, you know, it, you know, so. You, you, you uh, must have a German ancestor. Pardon me? What'd I you said say? you must have a German's ancestors who, who, yeah, with I'm six months in the bank. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, cash is king, right? <laughs> right. Oh, it's brilliant. I mean, it's great that you were prepared for that. You know, I'm sure the, the crew, uh, you know, appreciate it. And, and, you know, it's a common theme of when we're talking to digital shop operators is that, you know, really 2020 turned out in a lot of aspects to be an opportunity. Um, you know, yeah, sales might have been down or flat over previous year, but I mean, that's a big win when you shut down the economy, you know, and like you said, nobody was driving. Um, and, and to come through that and, you know, planning for growth this year, you know, being able to keep people on staff. I mean, that's an incredible win. That's a victory in the face of this pandemic. That's for sure. 
And, you know, and, and actually, Bill, you've been with Auto Vitals, I think, probably since the beginning of time. I know you guys went TVPX back maybe into summer. And so you've had kind of, uh, you know, your hands into the update. Uh, how's that been working out for you? Oh, it's really good. Um, you know, we were just talking about before the podcast about the Facebook battles over the technicians putting arrows and stuff. I, I think the new system is way better than the old one. It's, it, it, you know, I've been there so long, it's so different than when I started that people that are signing up now wouldn't even probably be able to use that old system. It's so, don't get me wrong, it was way better than what existed, <clears throat> but this system is, is, is far head and shoulders above the old system. Um, so last year we also integrated, we also switched from all data managed to uh, ProTracker and the Auto Vitals works a thousand times better with ProTracker. It's faster, the tiles are created faster, the, the whole shop is streamlined faster just because it's so much, it's just so much better, the ProTracker. The way that it puts the jobs on there and everything. It's, now don't get me wrong, y'all better would do some of that, but God, that system took forever to update compared to this system. So yeah, yeah that was big, that. yeah, and that was a big part of the you know the object, uh, objective of creating the TVPX was just to get faster performance. You know, it was kind of really clean it up and tighten it up, and all and 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 all those kind of imperceptible even changes, the stuff that happens in the back end have a big result on the front end when you notice the performance is increased, tiles don't drop, you know, uh, you just get more efficient, and uh, that's really was the key, and that. Switch to Protractor, I'm sure, helped a lot because, yeah, like you said, we've got really robust integration with Protractor, and it's almost immediate, uh, you know, and then the data being able to feed back and forth is, is just really incredible. It's a leaps and bounds over, especially when you first got started with us, buddy. <laughs> that oh one, you God, had to have yeah. a Kickstarter. You had to kickstart it every morning. You had to make sure you pulled the That's joke. Right. Half joke. Yeah, it was, yeah that, look, the old system was still great. We've made lots of money off of it, so... I mean, there's some things that, you know, I I don't agree with, but it's always going to be like that. Like, uh, one of my suggestions is I think you're underselling your value because, for an example, we do, we have about twice the deferred work of the amount of work we do. So if we have a $180,000 month, we'll have about 300000 ish in deferred work. Some of these people, this kind of deferred work is not something that you need to fix right this second. So they'll save up six, I mean, this is a big job, some of this stuff. And they'll save up six months, come in. We don't check the car. Well, we'll do an inspection, of course, of every car, but we don't recheck that same thing. We just come and do whatever we recommended. That wouldn't count on your auto vitals, how much money you sold. It's only within two weeks. Right. When they come back, right? So if you do a deferred job within two weeks, Auto valves counts that as from the inspection money earned. Yeah. So right. a lot of our money has recurred to where we used to have flatter spots in the year, right? Because we had this giant fair would like fill our business. Those days are long over because now it's more flattened our curve, if you want to say. Um, now we take appointments about three to six days in advance. Um, we used to not do any appointments. It was all like, come, come. but the, the, the deferred work and stuff has created so much more income for us and so much more work that we had to go to a scheduling system. And so we, we pull ourselves out of Stone Age and we use a schedule now. You know? <laughs> no, I, I, really, I really love that. Uh, how about we introduce a new KPI? We call that bookings. And that's the deferred work sold at the service advisor sales rate, right? So yeah. if you have deferred work worth 400,000 and the service advisor sells typically, let's say 40%, then your bookings is, you know, 40% of the 400,000 and you can track that. I, I love that. Co consider yeah. it in, in, on the list. Love it. Here it comes. Okay. That was worth the price of admission right there, Bill. Okay. <laughs> Another thing we just installed. So uh, now we were down 8%, but um, that those couple months there where they shut it down, I can't imagine anyone in their right mind is going to go back to that lockdown mentality, at least not over here in Georgia. And uh, I can't foresee that uh, happening again. 
Don't get me wrong. I still have my six months, you know, ready to go. But um, just installed that uh, Hunter Quick Check. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Yeah, sure. Drive through. It tells you if you need an alignment. But another reason I did it is because I want, we've been really working on streamlining our inspections. My goal is to have our average inspection time, which I'm sure is not your best practice, down to about 15 minutes on average. Now, some cars take 45 minutes, an old one, it needs a ton of stuff. If it's a 2017, obviously it's gonna be a very short inspection. It only has 20,000 miles on it, right? So that one will offset. But on average, I want 15 to 20 minutes. So we've streamlined last year because we had some extra time. We Every selection you make in the, in the inspection automatically generates what job goes with that, right? So that's fed the technician from having to constantly pick you know what they needed so that we we also narrowed down our inspections to four basic inspections so we have a quick inspection an intermediate inspection a full inspection and a pre-purchase inspection and they're just like they sound the quick inspection is you've been here less than 300 miles you know you waited a month to get your car fixed or whatever we're not going to go through that whole huge rigmarole checking ball joints and all this other stuff you've not even drove your car right so we started getting smart about that to, to just speed the whole process up. The Hunter Quick Check, one of the reasons I'm very interested in it, is when you drive through it, it takes 46 pictures of the car. So we were manually taking pictures all the way around the car using the auto vitals. So we'll, our picture count will be down, but I would like you guys to integrate, because right now what happens is it integrates the alignment specs, puts it on the inspection. I would like it to take those 46 photos, put it on the inspection because that will increase your photo count and they're great photos of all, it shows your whole car every step of the way. I'm sure you guys have seen it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's new to us, so we're very excited about it. Um, we're trying to up our alignment um, sales and <laughs> according to these readings, and we double checked it. We drove cars through that had a bad alignment, put it on our Hunter Elite, made damn sure it was the same reading because it's, it seems impossible the way it works. Uh, have you seen it? I mean, it's, Oh, yeah. No, it's an incredible. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Tool. It's an incredible tool. Yeah. And the thing I like about that is it gets more tire surface as you're rolling over it than some of the other tools out there, you know. So, uh, I mean, at least from a motorist perspective, you know, if you were selling me an alignment based off of those results, I, I would be more inclined to believe it versus, you know, some of the other kind of more narrow banded um, uh, measurement tools, you know. Um, but no, we like it a lot. We believe me, we like that. I, I don't know. Let me uh, let me let uh, let me. I better defer to Uva on the picture question because I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> uh, see. Not sure. You're always in trouble, so it, it's constant <laughs> yeah, there situation. Um, no, no. I wanted to mention three things actually. Have you looked into guided and uh, carry forward? That's going to help you. Uh, tremendously in your goal of uh, going for a more efficient inspection and then what tom i think refers to with the trouble is we try to look at this from a motorist perspective and more pictures is not better necessarily but impactful pictures are better right, I right? so because you you know but, you're but at the capturing... office you get a text you know, and, I was just and gonna... you don't look at 55 pictures, you, you know, 15 are enough if they are impactful and you pick up the phone and say, Bill, what is this? But Take you care of capture it, those please. in the CYA right. file. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I, didn't, I didn't express what I actually wanted. Um, okay. So right now, Hunter keeps those pictures for 15 days and then they erase them. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. That's right. I, I see. I see. I see. On. I mean, they're going to go on the inspection, but not where the motorists can see it, where it just goes in there and they're all for X the out yep. for the shop only. So, because Auto Vitals has it forever, right? Yeah. Right. That was, uh, that's what I meant. Not, okay. well, I want to send some 50 photos of the car on the outside. This is your doorknob. Right. right. It's Chrome. <laughs> um, no, definitely. Yeah, like, but but archive it in some type of a CYA file that's accessible when you need it. Right. Uh, Show by only. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, real quick, too, Bill, before we move on, is Matt Fowler's got a couple questions. He would like you to elaborate a little bit more on what inspection of your four versions, which inspection is going to be taking 15 minutes 
uh, and how did kind of how did you get it down? Uh, and I think you said that was your goal. You're maybe not there yet, but you're looking to get there. And I know a lot of our mining key operators and some of our you know quicker service operators are running because I think you know as a best practice, we're talking the courtesy inspection, you know, uh, or a preliminary inspection. That's 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 right in line with best practice, right? Your comprehensive inspection is going to take more, but you're looking and you're you you've already kind of got an eye on a target. So, um, well, we were doing a, a full-on comprehensive inspection, and we would do it um, every three thousand miles or six months. So, however long the car was, COVID has changed our thinking on using time. We no longer use time. Okay, so now we use a um, Within two weeks, it gets, it gets, I'm sorry, under a thousand miles, it gets our quick inspection. Hardly any cars get that. The quick inspection is basically check the fluids, check the battery, check the bulbs, look at the tires, warning lights, readiness monitor. That's basically it because they were just here less than a thousand miles ago. Every 15,000 miles, we do a full on inspection. So one of the ways I think I'm going to get it down to the 15 minutes is we're going to take away the walk around photos, right? I'm thinking those take two to three minutes to walk around the car and take all the photos, at least in our shop, the way it is and everything you got to get back and all this stuff to get a good photo, right? And so the quick check is going to take over all that because it's going to show any damage, right? And I don't think those pictures actually help the customers because they're just pictures of the outside of the car for our insurance, right? I mean, because they're just so that, you know, people will come in here. <laughs> we had a lady come in here and call 30 days later and said, we got paint all over her car. Like we ran through paint on the highway. Well, <clears throat> the photo showed there was no paint on her car when she was here. But just the craziness of waiting 30 days to tell me that, you know, I mean, so but we've, we've saved ourselves thousands of dollars in repairs with the photos before. Yeah. People saying, my car didn't have a scratch there. Well, here's a photo. I think now you've just added timestamps because you didn't used to have timestamps. And that was an issue because they said, you took it afterwards, you know, whatever. I mean, um, okay, but go back to the inspections. I'm sorry to, to change the subject. So we have a full inspection we do over 15,000 miles. So that includes full on checking ball joints, checking all the suspension. Um, we have a three, I've got a drive in, we have an underhood, and we have an undercar. Um, you know, we're checking the turn signals, all the bulbs, cabin air filter, air filter. I'm sorry, cabin air filters on the drive-in. Checking the parking brake, the hood release. Um, the main thing we're checking to cover our ass is the readiness monitors. It's very common for people to go. We have an advanced next door. They go next door, get a battery. Their check engine was on to come over here, get an oil change. Then they drive away and say that we, we call the check, check engine light, right? So that's the one we do. We check all, take a picture of all the warning lights, and of course, if it's got a TPMS, it auto populates to, um, you know, to, to do that job. We do how it's cranking, you know, if it's cranking slow and stuff like that. You know, windshield washers, wipers, the horn, um, the rear wiper, if it has a rear wiper, and that's basically our drive-in. And it sounds like a lot, but that particular thing you can do very fast. Now the cabin air filter, I'll tell you this, if it's one that's really hard, it's two hours labor, we're not checking that one. We're checking the ones you just open the glove box, you know, they're easy to check. So and then under the hood, we check all the fluids, belts, um, photos that everyone has a 15 photo minimum. Um, we take pictures of some stuff that's good, but take a picture of the belt if it's accessible, no matter what. Um, look at the battery cables, you know, you're doing a lot of just visual looking at stuff. Now, Something we've added is if it's direct injection at 30,000 miles, we suggest a direct injection service because we've had a lot of no starts coming in with high miles carbon built up. Um, but things like that don't take any time. I mean, basically, you got to know if it has direct injection. I mean, you're a mechanic. You should be able to look at the engine and know like that. I mean, it's not a, not a, not a freaking, you know, hood struts, coolant, you know, all the fluids, the battery gets checked on every car. Um, and then under the hood is the one that actually takes the long. If you start jacking up, checking ball joints, we have to use a drive on for it, checking all the suspension, the control arms, all the axles, all the, all the fluid leaks. We look at the brake pads as long as we can see them to try to guesstimate whether they need to be checked or not. 
if they look like they're low, because, you know, sometimes the shadows and stuff, it's kind of hard to see, but if it looks low at all, we suggest a brake check. Um, uh, we do not remove wheels and take crumbs off. And I mean, the inspection is free. If I tie a guy up for an hour on every inspection, we've only got 10 hours a day to work, okay? So when we're having 20 cars in here, that'd be 20 hours gone, you know what I'm saying? So we used to do these big long ones where we were just doing everything under the sun first when we got it. And I realized we were wasting a lot of, I wouldn't, I mean, it's not, maybe not wasting, but it's using a lot of hours that now that all this deferred work is here, that we typically can't do it. Do it. And um, were you paying, the, are you paying the techs a couple of uh, tents to do those inspections? No, I'm not. No? I'm not. So my techs are, yeah. uh, so then, then you get that, you know, you, you probably don't get the results you wanted if he's trying to spend an hour, you know, 45 minutes. Oh, uh, that's not the case. So um, we have really people who have really bought into this. They are all about it. In fact, if the internet doesn't work. They don't even want to work on the cars because they want to do the inspection because they're making, because the inspection, whoever does the inspection gets the work, right? We don't, we don't, this dude worked 45 minutes on inspection. We don't give it to this guy. You know what I'm saying? He did the inspection. He gets the work. So um, also, we, for, I don't know about the whole country, but for where we live, we pay pretty high, um, pretty high uh, salaries, I guess you could say. We have 401k. We have matching 401k. I pay 80% of all the health insurance, whether they're family or individual. Um, I, uh, they make $40.50 per flag hour. So they really don't have much to complain about. Um, we have varying labor rates. We have four different labor rates because we called all the dealers in our area and found out how much all the prices were and divided the cars up that way. And Protractor is so handy, you can assign a labor rate to every car. So it's always correct. Anyway, so that's our main one. Now, what the difference is, our intermediate one, which is the one that gets done the most, it has, um, we don't check the suspension. We do all the other things I mentioned. We don't check the inspection. I'm sorry. We don't check the, we don't pull on the drive on, jack it up, do all the ball joints, because it takes two people. Someone's got to wiggle the wheels. One person's not checking the front end. You can check the ball joints, but the tie right ends and stuff to see what's actually worn out takes two people. So we basically cut that part out. Um, everything else is there, fluid leaks, axles, because you can do that on a normal two post, right? You, you got it in the air probably anyway, whatever you're doing. Something else we streamlined with, we used to have just oil change technicians. So we changed, because everyone's doing an inspection, every car is getting raised in the air. Instead of split ticketing, we all now have all one tickets. So the technicians are doing the oil changes because it's only about seven minutes longer because you've already got the car in the air. You've already checked everything. Drain the oil, put the filter on there, check the tires. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're, so that's actually, and now there was some grumbling about that. Now I'm not going to lie. I mean, that was a hard sell, but since we've implemented that, they've all turned more labor. The shots turn more labor because we don't, we don't have guys pull the car out, pull the car in, all that takes time. When it's already in the air, you can just drain the oil and you're good, you're good you know. So um, at first there was some resistance, but now they're all in on it. And, you know, the inspections from day one. Now, listen, we've had employees work here that did not like the inspections. And we're exactly like you're saying. I'm not getting paid to do this inspection. I don't want to do it. Those people are no longer with us, okay? I need people... We're in a big boat here in Cooper Lake Automotive, and we want to row in the same direction, okay? Because a lot more stuff. Now, we have meetings, and we have suggestions. The good suggestion, we implement it, you know? Um, the oil change idea actually came from a technician. So, um, you know, we implemented that about halfway through the year last year. We had a lot of time to implement things last year <laughs> in 2020, you know? So, um, um, but... Sure. That's how I've gotten the inspection sped up because the majority of our inspections are this intermediate inspection. You know, first time customer gets full inspection, right? They're good for 15,000 miles because now if you see a wheel smashed in, they will 
jack it up and check the front end, okay? Because it's in their best interest to, to find some kind of component messed up, right? And now we have the quick check, it's even better. Yeah. Well, I want to so, thank uh, Matt Fowler for asking that question, buddy. Uh, appreciate it. Happy New Year, Matt. Uh, good to see you in the audience. Uh, matter of fact, I got to ring you up and, and bring you on for a round of who wants to be a digital shop millionaire. So guys, I think let's jump right into the game. You know, uh, you know, from this intro, I, I would say Bill probably already is a digital shop multimillionaire. Um, but um, uh, we'll see how it goes. And hopefully Ashley can join, you know, she can be one of your lifelines, buddy. Uh, and so for folks in the audience, you know, just so you know, especially in the live audience, uh, we, we're going to have you kind of on the expert panel of experts. It, it, you know, one of Bill's lifelines is ask the experts. And so don't chat in the questions yet until he asks for that lifeline. Okay. No cheating. And uh, for so that, you know, uh, Bill, we got the standard kind of 50, 50 lifeline. Let me just go ahead and get my screen share here. Uh, so we can get started. And, um, and then you'll have the Ask the Expert uh, uh, lifeline as well. I highly doubt I'm going to win this just for the record, okay? So. <clears throat> oh, we shall see. Mm -hmm. All right, are we ready? Can you guys see my screen? Does everybody see a Who Wants to Be a Digital Shop Millionaire intro screen there? Yep. All right, you have to imagine the uh, amazing background music. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Here it comes. And I'm going to do it in the uh, Slumdog Millionaire voice. Who wants to be a billionaire? Let's get started. So, you know, standard game. You've got several levels. The questions are going to get exceedingly more difficult. And also, Bill, we've got some kind of expert uh analysis type questions some deeper dives uh that we want to talk about and in one instance we're going to ask you to share some of your data from your shop if that's okay with you uh yeah let me uh add your tech effectiveness report what kind of data? Ooh, like sales or Ooh, no it's a tech effectiveness report it's something simple and you know i just got to tell you uber came in jumping like he just been walking over coals with all of the uh with all of the, the nuggets of information that he was able to extrapolate out of that report. So uh, we're going to be sharing that probably on the second question. But let's get started, sir. No pressure, no pressure for $100. What does TVP stand for? Oh, my God. I got to use a lifeline. I have no idea what TVP stands for. <laughs> Is it A, today's vehicle page? before so i have no idea what it's called i mean well let's see. Not talk about in this let's see today's vehicle page you got it's it today's final vehicle answer. page final and answer God, yes it is a good thing it's multiple choice for two hundred dollars where do you find the technician effectiveness report in the tvpx what are my choices a in the business control panel. B. I love that right there. The business control panel. B. Which I gotta say, was a great addition to the to the system. Yes, it is. Business control panel is awesome. Let me finish reading all the questions, just because something might come up that uh, is a better uh, or a more. B is email inbox. C is it's a menu item on the today's uh, on the TVPX menu bar. Or D, oh, time is up. How did that happen? Oh, I'm sorry. No, nah, it's oh, my fault. Let me, let me restart us because um, it was me blabbing too much. Let's get back to that question because you got plenty of time. No pressure, no pressure. Okay. All right, so we already got this one out of the way. All right, here we go. So do you want to get a 50-50? Is, is, is business control panel your final answer? Oh, it's going to be menu item. Okay, let's go with menu item as final answer. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Great job, Bill. 
Next question for $500. On the TVP, what does it mean if the text time is flashing in before red? This, okay, before we start this question, this red, okay, this didn't used to exist. Now it did. Uh, it's, a newer, it's newer to me compared to the old system. This is why we've been working so hard on streamlining the inspection. This exact question. Is that right? Be because um, because you were seeing a sea of flashing red, and then you had to find a solution for it. They're all going red. Wow. I mean, you're going to go red on some things. Oil change. It's only an oil change. Yeah, you're probably going to go red. But yeah, yeah. You're doing like, three, you know, a two hour job. You shouldn't be going red. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And that's that's awesome. And that's exactly the purpose of that. You know, uh, function was to do exactly that. A, you identified it, it helped you identify that there was a problem there. And for years you'd been operating and it would have been flashing red, you just didn't know it. Uh, and it was just part mm -hmm. of doing business. And then once it was red, you said, hey, I hate this red, I gotta figure something out here. And you know, you put in processes, improvements and efficiencies uh, that turn into dollars. So that's fantastic. So let's go ahead and start the, uh, start the question. Does it mean A, actual hours are greater than or equal to 95% of build hours? The tech forgot to hit complete on the tablet. C, the technician has a question. Or D, the tech is late for lunch. A. Actual hours are greater than or equal to 95% of build hours. Fantastic. It's a great feature. It's a great feature. Okay, now here... Um, are you are you using the guided mode? No, we do not use the guided mode. We've tried the guided mode. The guided mode is slower than the ah. method we're using. I okay. hate to maybe disagree with the expert, but from <laughs> our experience, okay, so, I have a great idea how to make it way faster than it is, but it is carrying you through so many more steps. Then an ex now listen, if you're not experienced with the system, it's a, you should use it as soon as you buy this. You should, you should all in. But if you have experienced techs who have been using this system, we don't have any turnover. So I want to say the shortest term worker is seven years here. I mean, I don't mean six, six years. I, I don't even know. So they've been through all the progressions of TVP, everyone that works here, right? So they are pretty experts in using the tablet side of the software. So in my opinion, an experienced person knows what they're doing, knows what's on the inspection, knows what they're looking for. Looking over the car is gonna do it faster than that guided mode from, from my experience. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's fine. I know, I know I'm gonna get in trouble for that, but I'm sorry. No, well, we'll see if you get the question right first. You, um, wait, okay. wait, wait, your honor, I have a question. Sure. Can we can we share Bill's technician effectiveness report before we oh, yeah, go yeah, back yeah. to, you know, to I guide I blew, it? Yeah, I know I blew right. Yeah, because you're right. That is that is your bro. That's brilliant, Uva. Um, let me, let me stop share. Do you have it loaded up? I have it loaded up. Okay, let me stop share and you go ahead and uh, and share. I'm sure it's terrible. No, 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 no. there's nothing oh, terrible. No, not at all. Not at all. There's nothing terrible. It's, Can you guys see it? It's amazing. Is it big enough for everybody? I, I it's the whole screen. I don't, I don't know how you made it that big, but this is bigger than what I was looking at. So, <laughs> cool. So, all the experienced techs know exactly what they're doing, right? Yeah. Like. Rachel loves cabin air filters. Sherman, not so much. Do you okay, see that? Hold on a second. Sherman hasn't been here. He's been out. Oh, I see. How no, does he? How does he? How does he recommend then a third of all cars have an engine cooling problem? Oh, obviously, I need to talk to Sherman. Well, and if you look at it, so in the very first column, you see number of inspections. So he pulled the timeline. So right. Sherman's got sixty-seven inspections in here. To Patrick has ninety. He's about you know, equal with Rachel uh, and David right. as far as inspections go in this data. Right. And what so date are these? Uh, that's uh, beginning of October through end of December. Okay. okay. And that's your full inspection you were talking about. It's 47 topics. You see that up here. 
That's my full one. Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. You have the intermediate one or not? Say again. You have the intermediate one, or this is just the. No, we can also do the, the 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 intermediate yeah. one if you, if you if you feel okay, that's ahead. more telling. Should I switch? Well, I just know we do more of them. We but, should be doing more. Okay. No problem but in, at all. The way I look at it, Bill, is is it really looks like you you see shop policy in there, right? Like you have right. specific policies because for the most part, like in um, what was that fluid leaks or air filter, uh, you can really see that they're following up the, the policy. In some other areas, well, it's a little bit more open to interpretation. Right. Yeah. So so from that. Um, you see, it's really interesting. Right. Rachel and David do, you know, three times as many of the intermediate. inspections compared with everybody else on the intermediate, whereas on the full, right. it's it, it's more uh, balanced. But but even even they that, still, right? Right. They you, still do the majority of the all changes. So. My guess is um, you have a shop policy on fluid leaks. Correct. Right. Yeah. So Dave, David identifies half of all vehicles have a fluid leak, whereas Sherman says a third. Right. Um, Rachel loves tires. Right. Well, that's only the left front tire. Yes. <laughs> so oh, only you can tell us why front. that is. Only, only the left front. <laughs> only the left front. Right front, not so much. <laughs> right. And and so and David and Rachel and Patrick are great in windshield washer fluid, right? That seems to be a quick win. Whereas Clay and Sherman just skip it. Right. Right. So I don't want to toot the guided the guided horn, but actually, I yes, I do do. want to of course you because do. <laughs> all the imbalances you will see here will maybe not eliminate it, but at least clearly um, balanced out more. I, I I would venture out to say, and I would if you if you're open to it. I would love to have Bill Connor give you a call, uh, show you the guided um, benefits again. And I would really love to do a race between 20 inspections on guided versus 20 inspections, non-guided, same inspection sheet. Yeah, I'm, I'm open-minded. I'm willing to try it, no problem. Um, now I will say, have you made changes in the guided recently? Uh, we have made a few, yes. Okay, because we tried it first when it came out, and it, oh yeah, that, not... that, 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 yeah. So I agree with you. We we you were not the only one giving us feedback that there is potential for improvement to make it faster, and okay. um, I think we have a few people in the audience who can attest to that, who gave us very direct and clear feedback about that, and uh, okay. and and, right. and so we, we were when it first came out. Right. We used it first when it came out, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't very efficient. I would say. Right. I I would agree with that. Okay. Cool. But you know, to to the more general point, the technician effectiveness report gives you a very clear picture on behavior and sweet spots. Technicians have sweet spots. And our recommendation is to review it with red. Doesn't mean always bad. Bad is oh. if if some people are red in one and then not in another, and you have inconsistencies. Then you know the consistency of your inspections is um, has potential to get better, right? So that's that's the huge benefit of of this report. Yes, I like it. Back to Tom. All righty. So now let's actually ask the question in the game. Let me get back here. All right. Let me know when you can see my screen. Everything look good? 
Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, Bill, for one thousand dollars, what is guided mode? A, tech hours are automatically submitted for payroll. B, the service advisor. Uh -huh. D. Uh -huh. Cha-ching! $1,000. Now, for $2,000, Bill, how many special That's markers awesome. are available on a vehicle tile? Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't do that part. I work in the back. That's my part. <laughs> Where's Ashley? Uh, what happened to Ashley? I, I like the back better. I mean, I hate the front. I never work in the front. No one, no customer knows know that I even exist. I mean, I'm like a ghost. No, no one even knows who I am. So I have a giant firewall. You cannot get me on the phone. It's impossible. So it's a great way to do so that I can have less stress in my life. Okay. So, so I like to stress, and that's what I do. That's my favorite part. So remember, we've got a 50-50 lifeline left. And anytime, Bill, you can just ask the expert and, uh, and uh, you know, no shame in your game. So let's go ahead and get this one started. We'll see what the answers are. A, six tiles, B, five, C, three special markers, or D, four special markers. It's A. See, you know, you know this stuff. I was worried you had changed how many were on there from before. Because I used to use it all the time, but now it's a whole new thing. So I'm like, damn, if you change that, then I, I don't know. So, And there's a million customizable ones you can put on there. I mean, we use those a lot. Um, because we have two service technicians, we put a little phone on there. I know there's another symbol to see when a car has been called now. It didn't used to have that, so we still use our old... They put a little phone on there, which knows the, the other technician. The other service writer knows someone's called pretty fast with the big, you know, so yeah. I like it. Yeah. And, and that is, you know, folks, that is, uh, you don't get to kind of upload your own icon anymore, but you can still create all your special markers that you need, uh, custom special markers. Uh, Uva, what would you say, you know, are some of the most important special markers uh, that, that shops should be using? Oh, Wait. the ones I like the, the most is um, which are linked to a countdown, right? When you have a customer coming in, a walk-in, and it has to be done in two hours, you just put a waiter 120 minutes and you see exactly how far you're off from the promised time of two hours, right? Everything which has to do with things in the future you want to hit, like a parts delivery or the customer I just mentioned, S smart markers are amazing. Um, the, the, the other one I, I really like, Bill just made that, um, is the alert for the tech, as well as the ones you can connect to a job, right? So you just link that to a job and automatically the inspection is being chosen or the smart marker pops up um, because of, we identify a certain job is on the work order, like you have to do uh, an alignment. So you show the alignment smart marker. Everybody knows you need the alignment machine, right? Just by doing nothing, just having the alignment job on the work order, right? Yeah. Th those are my three favorite ones. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> and I just want to um, say, I cannot remember exactly what shop it was, but our absolute top winner of the most customized special markers created 400 markers. Oh my God. 400. <laughs> you know, every parts, every parts delivery down to the minute it, it, it seemed was managed with it. I mean, unbelievable. That's how. That's how helpful it can be. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that would take some orientation. Uh, you know, right. training, <laughs> training the service writer would take an extra week. 
You got to have a glossary. You got to have a, you have to have a special marker for the special marker uh, glossary. Um, <laughs> that's that's right. To be able to create 400, that's, that's a lot of work. I mean, it's a lot of work. Well, yeah. In work, boy. Now it's not anymore, right? With the new with the new TVPX, it's not as you don't need to look for pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. But still, I agree. But yeah, you know, yeah. as you know, if you put the work in for preparation, it and it pays off with every vehicle. It's worth doing. Yeah, and you know, and a lot of those things would be nice. You know, if it was available and kind of how the inspection library uh, sheet library is, right? If if special markers could even be shared and then be shared, yeah. Download it. And by the way, in chat earlier, Tony Funderburg was asking, uh, it'd be nice if the uh, technician effectiveness report was available for download and print. And I mean, you know, right. Tony, you can always screen screen grab. I thought we exported that one. Uvo? No, no, I don't think we did. Well, now you got a future request hashtag. Yep. Request. All right, perfect. Uh, we got 15 minutes left, so we better roll through some questions because we can't send Bill out of here with only $5,000. He's got to leave as a digital shop gazillionaire. So, Bill, in guided mode, and, you know, again, remember, you got your lifelines. In guided mode, what must be done by the technician to submit the inspection to the service rider? What must be done? Push on the wrong mouse. A, complete all mandatory topics. B, take a picture on every topic. C, pick a condition and action on every topic, or D, hit the submit button on the tablet. Lifeline. Yeah, I don't mean lifeline. You want a 50 50? A. Boom, right in the nick of time. Look at that. Clutch under pressure. Great job. Congratulations on $5,000. In digital currency. I think Google's got the check in the mail already. So for $10,000 on the tablet, how does the tech review the pictures that have already been taken? A, tap the camera roll button. B, shake the tablet up and down. C, the tech can't see the pictures. Tough luck. A. Cha-ching, winner, winner, chicken dinner for $10,000. Ten thousand dollars in auto vitals bucks. This is a this is a question for Ashley. Go get her. We want to see Ashley. You can't hide back there forever. Yes, this is a good, yes, this is a. A lot of people are going to get this one wrong. I don't think so. It's so easy. Uva is throwing down the gauntlet. All right, answer this question. Hi, Ashley. Welcome to Digital Shop Talk Radio. Hello, how are you? Great. We appreciate your time. So, real quick, Bill's got a lifeline going here, the Ashley Lifeline. Ashley, on the TVP, how do you see vehicles scheduled for tomorrow? And here are your questions. No pressure. It's for $25,000. A, do you search for tomorrow in the search bar? B, click the plus sign next to the drop down in the first column. C, you can't see tomorrow's vehicles on today's vehicle page. Or D, add a column for tomorrow's appointments. I mean, for us personally, or like you're asking best practice, or? I'm the TV. Congratulations. <laughs> The timer was about to run out and I couldn't let the game, I couldn't let Bill fail. He had so much money riding on that. That was for $25,000. But if we could, Uba, if we could go into a little bit more um, kind of detail there, what that question was about is just to say that you can add columns, right? You can expand your columns in your, um, uh, on your TV. Upload, yep. And you can see tomorrow's vehicles. You can see the day after tomorrow's vehicles. Okay. And you can also see your no-shows as well. Um, is there anything Uber, that you wanted to add to that? 
Yeah, I just as a best practice, some shops are that bold and put the workflow TVP in their office, including rating room, so everybody can see what vehicles and what workflow steps, including the appointments. And okay. that's, that's unprecedented transparency. I agree. But what happens when you're doing a job and that tile's up there, the job's 12 hours or something, and the guy does it in eight? What, well, what do you do then? Um, you don't see that on the TVP in the, th th this level of detail you would not see. And you have always more than one tech working on a car. That's a very easy explanation. Okay. Yeah, from the tech view. All right, Ashley. What is the minimum goal for motorist research time? This is for $50,000, no pressure. Is it A, 240 seconds, B, two minutes, C, 24 seconds, or D, 24 minutes? I'd say the most available, which would be 240. <laughs> 240 seconds. Man, you guys are just killing this game today. $50,000. Congratulations. I'm sure Bill will have that your next paycheck. MTVPX, how do I so send text <laughs> to the customer? <laughs> In TVPX, how do I send a text to the customer? A, do I go to the text opt-in screen and select their mobile carrier? B, click the message icon at the bottom of the vehicle tile. C, click the plus sign next to the calendar icon on the vehicle tile. Or D, use search to look up the customer's phone number. See, it is for $100,000. Cha-ching! Incredible job. Incredible job. You can't hear all of the background music, but it's going crazy, and the audience is screaming. In the workflow, this is for 250,000 digital auto vitals bucks. In the workflow view of TVPX, what does the number drop down next to the column title mean? All right? So on the top of the column, you see the heading of the column, and then there's that little number with a drop down next to it. What the heck is that? Is it A, how many cars the customer owns? B, the number of no-shows for today? C, how many times that column appears on the page? Or D, how many vehicles are waiting for inspection? C. C. Ashley says C, and she is correct for $250,000. That is incredible depth of knowledge, Ashley. Now I see why Bill had you as a ringer. She worked in the front. Yeah, exactly. The pretty people up front Very and the ugly people in the back. I mean, that's the key, right? I mean, you got the pretty people up front on display, and then you got me back there sweating, turning wrenches. That, that's the right. Super success. Remember that. <laughs> Well, now we're getting into your territory, Bill. These are going to, they're not going to be as easy as these last few and Uva wrote them. Uh, so for $500,000, how do you know when the motorist has studied the inspection results? How do you know that they've looked at their inspection? A, the vehicle tile starts to flash. B, I'll ask them on a phone call. C, the customer calls you. Or D, the number of seconds appear on the tile. D. It's deep. Look at this. For $500,000. It's incredible. Congratulations. No pressure. 600,000. What is the KPI to gauge customers approving more work? So Bill or Ashley, what KPI would you look at to know that customers are approving more work? Is it A, length of phone call with the customer, B, the ARO, C, WTF, that's a work total found, or D, MRT, motorist research time? Oh. I use that ARO as my most important, but maybe I'm wrong. Help them out, Ashley. D, D it is. Ooh, okay, right at the last motorist research time. That's the most important KPI to look at. That tells you that folks are 
searching, you know, studying the information and contemplating. And uh, uh, we usually see higher motorist research time connected to higher approval rates. So focus on getting that motorist research time up if it, your, yours is not. And as Ashley told us uh, a little bit ago, a good number to shoot for, your minimum uh, goal should be 240 seconds of motorist research time. Fantastic. For 750,000 Auto Vitals bucks, what point of sale has the deepest integration with Auto Vitals delivering the best results for the shop? And this one might just be right up your alley. This might be a laydown for you. A, a is a garage operator. B is a protractor and shopware. C Mitchell and RO Rider or D Mitchell and Windworks. Protractor. I don't know what shopware is. Is, is that new? Did you guys always integrate with shopware? Look at that. Oh, no, it's brand new. New, right? I mean, because I, I wasn't yes. when I called you guys and asked which system to go with. You know, you recommended Protractor. That they didn't even talk about that. And that's a new one, huh? Okay. Yep. Yeah, just got, Don't get it wrong. There's so much work to change. I'm not interested in changing. So. And a matter of fact, to pitch a future episode on February 10th, we're going to be having Carolyn back on with Uva, and we're going to be talking about uh, uh, <laughs> the next level of integration with Shopware. So mark that on your calendars. Those of you that are interested in taking a look at Shopware, uh, that'll be February 10th episode of the Digital Shop Talk Radio. All right, folks. I mean, right at the right at the perfect time too. I mean, we're going to hit the mark exactly for $1 million. This is for all the marbles. No pressure, Ashley and Bill. If you wanted to increase weekly revenue and you have two service advisors and tech and six technicians, what should you do? Well, let's find out. A, you introduce a production manager or slash foreman. B, you change the bonus structure. C, you hire Uva's smart ass to tell you what to do, or D, hire another service advisor for the front counter. I imagine the answer is A. <laughs> is, that your do final you know? answer? is that your final answer? Yeah, I think it's A. And it is A for all the marbles, $1 million. Uva's got the AV Digital Bucks check in the mail. Congratulations, okay. Bill Rimmer and Ashley Payne. You are now, or you have been, Digital Shop Millionaires. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I know you guys did great. You did really good. There was a couple on there. I figured, you know what? And, and this, I don't know. I didn't plan this. But you just happen to be on TVPX. You weren't using guided, which I thought was going to trip you up a little bit. You're on a protractor shop already. And I thought to myself, well, there's got to be one or two things in here. But obviously, you can tell oh, yeah. runs a tight ship over there. His folks are trained up well. They're using the program. You heard the results from 2020 that Bill told us about. I can only imagine what's going to happen in 2021. And Bill, I got to tell you, and Ashley, I look forward to having you on a future episode and giving us a follow-up to how, uh, you know, that new TVPX and some of these new uh, goals that Bill has put in place, reducing that inspection time uh, and some of the other uh, follow-up, uh, taking care of that deferred work, how that's working out for you uh, in 2021. Thank you very much for coming on and playing. Congratulations for your resounding victory. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us on. It was very fun. We learned stuff. Well, I learned something. Slacker here wasn't here, but um, duty calls, guys. Yeah, <laughs> Ashley was busy oh. taking care of business. She was down there. Exactly. Support. That's what Ashley was doing. But now you guys, we are going to turn on guided mode just so you know and try it out and yes. uh, see if it goes. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think. And you know what? I'm going to make it a punishment for the people who aren't doing those cabin air filters. So it's going to yeah. be pretty, uh, pretty easy. And as we learned today. Check out that technician effectiveness report. And you know exactly who's taking care of cabin air filters and every other topic on your inspection. Uh, and if you have any questions about that, post it up on the Facebook forum. Contact your Auto Vitals advisor. They're there to help you. Thousands of shop owners are waiting for some questions to answer on the Facebook forum. Take advantage of that. 
Tune in next Wednesday, same time, same place, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, where we're going to play another episode of Who Wants to Be a Digital Shop Millionaire? And we'll have another fabulous guest on, probably with the same success story as Cooper Lake Automotive, but you'll have to tune in to find out. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate everything. It was great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome.